All right, so we're back with this semi-dwarf pair. You can see I cut off quite a bit more. I'm probably at my third right now. Um, but I wanted to show you a few more things to pay attention to. And I know because this one was so vigorous over the past year and a half that I'm not in too much danger of taking too much here. And I can expect that it will grow just fine in the following year. I also know that I want to keep the height down. So cutting a little bit more and reducing that vigor is just fine with me. So check out a few things here. This branch, it's flopped over. Right? So your branch angle is really poor here. I actually have an obtuse angle and you're looking for something between 45, 60 degrees, maybe slightly over 60. So I'm over, I'm well over a hundred degrees here. Plus if you get a single plum or something on there, that's going to snap. That's going to peel away just like that right there. Just broke. So instead of having that happen and more disease getting in, I'm going to remove that with my hand pruner right there right and there's a few as these plum branches get longer and longer that same sort of thing happens over and over right real floppy and that's not what we want to see instead we like to see this branch come up and then if we want all right note here how so this is a really acute angle there you're talking 30 degrees maybe less and these two are going in the same spot, so we don't need both of those. I'm going to take off this one lower down here. So that this one, with a little more branching up above, can become some of my fruiting wood next year. So, this thing, it's not going to look perfect by the end of pruning this summer. Because of the lack of attention last year, I'm going to have to do this same thing again next summer. And I will also consider, consider doing some winter pruning. If we get a period of seven or 10 dry days in a row, sunny dry days, I see that in the forecast by day two or three of that spell, I can come out, make a few cuts, leave it for another five, six, seven, eight dry sunny days, a chance for all those wounds to seal over and things will more or less be okay. If I don't get that break in the weather, I will not be winter pruning and I will count on next year's summer pruning to deal with it. So my big concern in walking away right now is that I've got some really long growth here and I don't want things to get any taller than that. That's, you know, 10 feet up, I can't reach it. So this is where your heading cuts come in. So here, if I head back, and usually when we head, we want to do it within three or so nodes of the previous branch. That's by no means an absolute rule, just, um, just something to consider. So I did it to an outward facing bud. So when this grows, this branch here is going to come out laterally this way. Right? Likewise, the one immediately below it is going to come out laterally. And since they're on the same side, there's going to be a little bit of overlap here, but at that point we can choose which one to eliminate. But for now, I've reduced some of the height and I've brought the growth outside instead of back in toward the center. And so you can see there's a lot of opportunities to do that same thing. So you can make all these heading cuts, but if you do too many heading cuts, right? I've got a dozen or more branches that would be candidates for this same thing on the tree right now. Too many heading cuts are going to produce uh, what Tanya likes to call sparkler growth. So you're going to get small shoots off the end of here, small shoots off the end, small shoots off the end, small shoots off the end. And you're going to have all these tiny little branches that aren't going to be able to support fruit, right? that are going to take up a bunch of space and they're just overall not the way you want to see your thing end with, you know, if I were to let's say head to here and then we get this sparkler right there, then nothing else is going to fill out this area wider. It's just going to be a busy little section right here. So heading cuts are not always the answer. In fact, I think most of the time thinning cuts should be your go-to. Here's another one. This one's completely horizontal. No need for that across the center. Right, so I've kept this, the center more or less open now. I've got a few real floppy ones. Here's one where the tip 
is dead. You can see no growth up here. It's black. So you can cut that back to a living bud and you try to pay attention to where the color changes. You could of course remove that whole thing, but this is at least a year old now. I could see some fruit forming down here at the base next year. So I'm just gonna take off a couple nodes back to that spot there, head it, and again, that'll spread out a little bit, but because it's on the interior, right, it's getting less light already, so I'm fine with that being smaller, and maybe one or two pieces of fruit are gonna drag that thing down. So these are the considerations that you're making as you decide which things stay and which things go. This one is a pretty extreme example, again, because of the lack of attention last year. So there's a lot of cutting to make. I'm gonna make a couple more heading cuts to finish this thing off, but really, take a look at the ground again. I've taken my third and probably then some. So I've reached my quota for the plant and now I just need to let well enough alone and see what happens for the next year. Come back next summer and make another effort to renew this thing. And by two years from now, when I'm on my third round of summer pruning, right now, next year, the year after, right? I should see this thing at the height that I desire, at the width that I'm looking for, with an open center, right? And overall in better shape with more fruiting wood than I have now, which I have now a lot of very long vegetative shoots. So that's my medium term goal for this tree.